better if I don't use e-commerce rather than changing my entire business structure with a bank. You show to customers, wow, you're amazing, you're a crazy man. Yeah. Package it and try to throw it online on an actual server. They're not flexible and uh, lots of people host outside. And there was practically only one sale. If you're local, you pay all taxes. Hi, Patrick. Hi, how are you? I'm very nice. Couldn't you represent yourself and your company? Yes, uh, my name is Patrick Varmo. I'm uh, 36 and I'm a freelance web developer. I come from the Seychelles. Yeah, and as I know, you have a web design company, yes, with your partner, and also yes. you manage hosting here. Yes, I have a small web design company with uh, my partner, Steve, whose main role is mostly photography. Mm -hmm. And we also provide various um, hosting services, which includes cloud hosting and VPS. Okay, N nice. Or oh, just about seashells, so we're on seashells. Our audience just need to, to know. So seashells is about 100,000 people, one stadium, yes? Yes, correct. Oh, maybe you have some numbers about how many domains here about CS? To be fair, there's quite a lot of domains. There's mostly .coms rather uh -huh. than the local domains, which is .sc, mm -hmm. which I believe is more authentic to the island. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe people choose .com because they feel it's more professional and more corporate in that manner. So yeah, they opt for .com mostly. And I believe there's a lot. And by the way, what is the regular price for domain? Okay, uh, for depends. not dot coms, but for local ones. Okay, local ones is around thousand rupees, mm -hmm. which I think is maybe what it converts to maybe Seven. around forty-five, fifty USD or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compared to dot coms, which are like what ten to twenty USD. Yeah. So yeah. When people sell local domains, possibly there are less competition, so the price could be higher. Actually, yes, when people sell local domains, they tend to put the price higher because the process is longer. You either have to do the paperwork compared to online, which is all digital. So, yeah, I believe local domains, while they are authentic, they do have this um, price tip that comes along. Okay, and uh, as you know, Seychelles is vast, one, one of the most expensive hosting in the world. I saw Switzerland is about 15 or 20 euros per hour. Here it depends because sometimes people host outside, sometimes people yeah, host um, here, but it's always price is negotiation, yes? Basically, I don't think um, we offer any local hosting. Yeah. If we do, it's very expensive because you need to factor in internet prices as well, which is also expensive. So I think many people will opt to get um, a very cheap shared hosting online, mm -hmm. which is probably around 30 USD maybe yeah. a, um, a year. So it saves them the, the amount they will pay in local currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because I see always islands has usually have bad connections if it's not Malta. Yes. And uh, also it's traffic is expensive. So the reason people host outside and local telecoms usually are monopolized like yes, by government right. or by somebody else, but the idea and the, the result, they're not flexible and uh, lots of people host outside. Yes, that's correct. Um, basically, um, I do recall some of our ISPs long ago, they did provide um, hosting solutions, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really um, a quite good service that you're looking for. For example, if you go online and search for a decent hosting company, you'll probably get like maybe at the start, you probably get 50 GB of space, which is quite a lot. You're not going to use it, but it's a lot. But um, basically, those hosting that we're going to get here is probably going to give you like probably one GB of space. So I believe we have a lot to improve on in terms of local hosting if we do want to explore this option. But for now, I think everybody just try to um, see if we can get international hosting, which I think is cheaper. And also, uh, one question, so Seychelles is like world best beaches, world biggest coconuts yeah. and lot, lots of things like lots of fish and, uh, and uh, for me only one question, what is about website builders? Website builders are popular here or it's the, the culture only um, coming? I won't say it's popular, it's coming along mm -hmm. much like e-commerce itself, e-commerce has been around for decades but yeah. it's only now recently that we are picking up slowly the pieces mm -hmm. of e-commerce i think website builder is the same 
But then again, it, I think it depends on the market as well. Um, it depends what you want to do, what you want to achieve as the client, and mm -hmm. if your developer is able to deliver through the builder. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs um, a little bit more exploration, if I can put it that way, so we can see where we are with the builder versus the other competition. And about payment gateways, as you know, you use like uh, cyber sources. Correct, yes. And also some, some are coming, but they are very expensive, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, the only option we have right now is for the ABSA payment portal, which is CyberSource. Um, we do have other banks, but they do not have the gateway ready. Um, so most of us, unfortunately, we have to use ABSA. And while the integration is fairly easy, um, unfortunately, not many businesses are using ABSA as their bank. So they have this tendency not to switch or change banks just because this bank is providing e-commerce. So I think most of the people just say, okay, you know, it's better if I don't use e-commerce rather than changing my entire business structure with a bank. About support, when, when is you, you regularly answer customers? If something happens at night, do you reply them or it's only working hours? Actually, I acknowledge the mail. Yeah. Um, thank God I haven't had any incident in my yeah. whole career. Um, with anything bad happening overnight. If there's anything that has happened, it's probably just a downtime with mail service. Yeah. But this, I believe, I communicate um, in advance to the client, mm -hmm. so they know it's going to happen, so mm -hmm. it doesn't become a problem. But in terms of web, I haven't had any issues as of, as of yet, no. And uh, as you know, Seychelles is like, uh, you have also your, like, I don't know, logo of your islands is in three parts because you're like connection of three different i don't know not nations but three different cultures yeah cultures. yeah and uh, the reason uh, you are talking here in, usually in three languages and possibly people when you communicate with customers you always communicate also with the three languages yes yes depends um for example if you you meet a, a french customer yeah um they'll probably write you in french because it's their language yeah but if you're fluent in french it's best you mm -hmm. speak back in french but if you meet the person in a meeting and your French is not so fluent, yeah. um, it's best you ask beforehand if it's okay to use English. Yeah. Because English as well in, in our country is like yeah. the second used language compared yeah. to French. Even though our local Creole is technically a French. Mm -hmm. So we would mostly stick to English where appropriate. Yeah. And for your per personal business, uh, do you feel uh, like international of players like GoDaddy or I don't know, international web design studios who working in here in Seychelles or mostly you are maybe like independent and you don't feel any competitors here? Um, actually, to be fair and to be honest, we do not have um, international competitors per se. We do have international developers, mm -hmm. um, but they are not coming into our market. It's actually our clients reaching out externally. Mm -hmm. So. They are not marketing for the Seychelles market, but rather it's the clients going out. Yeah. But I believe the, the local suppliers, they do have a very dominant force in the Seychelles, but maybe the pricing plays a, a very strong role. And maybe you can share any ideas how you market, uh, how you like, like many like some life hacks when you like did something and it works very well. For example, if you can share some, some like, ideas if you if you have some if nothing for, for example if um, I've worked on a project um, and there are certain um, elements within that project yeah. that, that's new and yeah. people have never heard of I'd probably usually do a, an, an email marketing usually this is what I do um, I don't do it so often because I feel maybe I'm spamming people mm -hmm. so <laughs> I do it once in a while and I try to explain what we've done what is um, the process behind this certain activity so they'll understand that maybe this is something that they could opt for in the, next pro in the next projects if they are interested. So yeah, I tend to maybe communicate via mail mostly, not calls. For us, we really start understanding what this means, user experience. Earlier, you know, we know like user experience is a very nice term when we talk to each other and like when we, like, when we talk to each other, we know that user experience is something about that. But we really start understanding the, the methods so we like do, do design you not sh do not show it to experts you ask people for the right question yeah. and, and you see if they succeed 
yeah. and really we get lots of tons of knowledge and we understand like the same similar interface in one place do not work in another yeah just right. because people behavior is different yeah so for us we really start understand ux methods yeah and and by the way there are lots of ui designers they really do nice design yeah and also we understood that maybe less than one of 10 designers if you take 10 ux designers less than one usually understand the methods how to yeah. work right. usually they have their wise and they just said you should to do like this because it's my opinion yeah. and this is, is, is the idea just and we like like UX, UX it's like I don't know maybe 20 years of when its term become very popular but still we are only now understanding the value of, of this uh, actually U, UX yeah user experience is something that um, I want say it's popular yeah. in our country um, it's mostly the user interface the yeah. UI people mostly focus on how looks their product looks they're not really interested in the experience. So um, generally, when you build a product, someone will only look at how it looks. So they won't be stressed out about, oh, okay, the button positioning is wrong, whatsoever. No, they, they won't go down the road much. So most of the projects, as you can see, or maybe most of the clients, they tend to have the same reasoning behind most of the projects because most of them tend to work um, very straight line so there's very few in between that is very tech savvy and smart that will put a challenge forward and say okay I want myself a very nice um, user experience where I can have a very nice home page with a call to action and maybe that call to action will have someone shop down the line or something but this is very rare cases because people tend to just want their project done and get online maybe you can uh, share any your uh, like fault when you when you just did something and it doesn't work like so people can learn from your mistakes if you have some um, to be fair um, I've mostly tried um, when I was developing some um, modules and components for Joomla mm -hmm. um, there are times where you develop something on your local server it works fine any issues nothing is picked up but eventually as you package it and try to throw it online on an actual server nothing works so then you have to start the debugging process which again takes you time and, and of course resources and for me as a developer, it's not really a problem because it's a challenge as well because there are things maybe you didn't factor in during your development, which is okay. But then again, the biggest problem is your client because they are expecting you to be on your timeline as usual, but yeah. you're not. So then you have to come up with something to explain to them as to why certain things are not working. But yeah, I've had my, my, my fair share of experiences. For example, migrating websites on various hosts doesn't work or certain elements doesn't work. And unfortunately, you have to, I think in the end, we have to communicate. Uh, we have to talk to the client, talk to whoever um, is in the business and advise them that, okay, we're going, we're not going to be online um, for a certain period of time because so and so. So hopefully <laughs> they understand. And this gives you enough time to work on your project. For us, it was a big mistake. Now we understood it only this week we had lots of data and we don't have like graphics and we did now graphics for example how it's our builder opening and publish rate in all our lifetime yeah. and we saw that when we launch new product and usually it's from my experience it's always like that the conversion is usually goes down and by the way we like we don't ever measure it at that time. Oh, okay. And we not now when we repair the conversion, we see why two years ago we have big breakdown, mm -hmm. just because the product was new and very fashionable and everybody liked it. You know, when you show to customers, wow, you're amazing, you're crazy man. Yeah. yeah but but in real life, you do. I like, think you advertise it, but your like other graphs goes down. You don't understand why. So now we understood that the main thing is like conversion, like. Um, on my side, mostly um, issues that I've had with products, it's mostly through e-commerce. Um, I do recall when I did my very first e-commerce website, I think it was, what, 2015, I think, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And back then, e-commerce wasn't a thing in our country. So even though we did a ton of marketing on the benefits of using your card online or whatever, shopping, um, it didn't catch on. Um, to be fair, um, the project um, failed uh, miserably. 
um, because people didn't really grasp the concept of e-commerce. So the store was there online for a year and there was practically only one sale. And to me, that it doesn't mark um, me as a failure. Instead, um, it shows that eventually you have to develop things with time. So you don't rush a project out because you have the facility and it's there. You have to wait for the product to pick up slowly only then that you enter the market with it. In this way, we see many yachts uh, and you know, we have like product cloud and on-premises. You know, cloud, it's like renting the yacht and on-premises, like it, put it in your garage. What you suggest, it's cloud or on-premises? Uh, mostly cloud. Cloud. On so rent not yachts, really. not buy it. Yeah, <laughs> on-premises is not recommended. Cloud it is, yeah. You need to keep in mind as well that um, if you are using cloud, um, there's a very high chance of it not failing. It's 100% available any time throughout the year. But compared to on-premises services, it's, it's tricky because then you have um, downtime, for example, like electricity runs out, power is out. So yeah, you need to factor all these in. And by the way, it's very strange in seashells, if you're an offshore company, you do, do not pay tax for the profit. And uh, if you're local, you pay all taxes. So it's a, a, a little bit strange, strange situation, but... Yeah, I can't really explain that. It's just how the law is, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have to you know, pay our taxes at the end of the year, so that's how it works. Yeah. As a small business, I usually have my, my taxes done around February, because I think the end of um, returns is around April, so yeah. So the countries that provide zero tax for everybody pay tax inside, a lot of tax inside. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we do have, the government actually does have a lot of taxes um, out there that they are trying now to collect. And unfortunately, some, some small business as well just gets in the way. And unfortunately, some of us start getting letters of back taxes. So, but that's just for the local community. I'm not entirely sure about offshore. Um, that's probably worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't have any experience on the offshore thing. So I can't really talk on that. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Nuarisa, you must welcome.